In this video, we'll discuss a very important topic, which is the impact that variations in the fabrication process have on a finished chip. Along the way, we will address an even more important topic, which is, which is more dangerous, a setup time violation or a hold time violation? The manufacturing process of integrated circuits is extremely complex. A lot of things can go wrong at different levels of the design and the fabrication process. By going wrong, we don't mean that the final chip has something broken in it, but we mean that there will be variability, there will be variations in the finished chips. The variations could happen from die to die, or could happen even within the same die. For example, within the same die, some of the variations we can see are variations in distribution of the clock signal. The clock signal is usually provided from a single source, and we expect the clock signal to arrive at all registers the same way because we are in a synchronous circuit. Uh, however, there will be inevitable variations in the distribution of the clock signal to different registers, and there will be inevitable noise on the clock signal itself. The impact of variations in distribution, in spatial distribution and in time will be discussed in detail in module 14. Also, there will be variations in the distribution of power supply and ground, which are provided from single chips and are supposed to be provided to all logic gates in the chip. Now, there will be resistive drops and inductive bounces on um, the ground and supply rails, which will be discussed in detail in modules uh, 8 and 13. There is also variations in temperature along uh, the chip. Now, uh, when the chip operates, some parts will be more active than others, some parts will see more switching than others, and therefore some parts will heat up more than others. Heat affects the way devices work, devices become slower when they heat up, and therefore certain areas of the chip will be hotter than other areas, and certain areas will be faster than other areas. Now, whatever the uh, source of variation that we see, we have to find a way to model these variations so that we can see their impact on performance. One of the most useful ways to model uh, the impact of variations is to see their impact on mobility, the mobility of electrons and the mobility of holes. The mobility of carriers is a very good uh, parameter to encompass the performance of devices, because the higher the mobility, the more available current there is to charge and discharge capacitors. Thus, devices with higher mobility are generally faster. Devices with lower mobility are generally slower, having less current available to charge and discharge capacitors. When we design, we usually design with nominal values of mobility and for electrons and for holes. And let's imagine that we have a, an x-axis and a y-axis giving us a plane in which we have the mobility of holes, mu p, and the mobility of electrons, mu n. When you first design a circuit and go through the design flow, when you first start to calculate delay values, you are calculating the delay values based on uh, currents available for nominal values of mu n and mu p. So there's a certain average point in the plane, which is the typical point. It is the average point. For a uh, mature process, this typical point is also going to be the average. If you produce a lot of chips, this should be the mobility that you observe on average from all these chips. So this is the typical uh, mobility value that you should see. But you see, averages or means can be uh, very deceptive because we could have this mean and it could be the product of uh, points that are never on the mean, but they're actually around it and thus end up producing it. And so we get devices that are points in the plane as long as this typical point is the middle of these points, it will be the mean, the mean of, of, of these points. But we could end up with a process that never gives us the typical uh, corner. Now, if we have a mature process, then we also know that typically there is a maximum value of uh, mu n, uh, which we call the fast value of n that we never observe or very rarely observe any devices coming, you know, with a mobility above it. So these are our fast devices. Uh, the distance between the mean or the, or the typical uh, value for electron mobility and the fast value for electron mobility is usually some uh, multiple of the um, standard deviation or variance of 
of the process. Similarly, there's also a value for a slow end device that we rarely see uh, devices being produced slower than this uh, in NMOS. Uh, similarly, we also see a slow uh, uh, device for PMOS and a fast device for PMOS characterizing the extremes that we see. And so the worst, not the worst, one of the corners we can observe is the slow slow corner. In this corner, we get devices that are slow. Both of them, PMOS and NMOS, are slow. Another corner we can observe is the um, fast, or is the slow fast corner, where the PMOS is slow and the NMOS is fast. We can also observe a corner where um, both devices are fast, so this is the fast fast corner, and another corner where the PMOS is fast, so F, and the NMOS is slow, so S. And the majority of devices produced will lie between these design corners. And so we call these four cases the uh, four design corners. Um, we can also think about uh, typical fast, for example, or uh, typical slow, or typical typical, or uh, whatever we design uh, decide to look at. We can also look at uh, uh, fast typical and slow typical. Sometimes people call these points, sometimes they call them corners, design corners, as well as the typical, typical average point, they call them design corners. And sometimes they only talk about the four corners of the rectangle here as uh, design corners. So we have two types of design corners. We have symmetric design corners, where both devices are either slow or fast, and we have asymmetric or skewed design corners, where one of the devices is fast and one is slow. So we're talking about the slow fast and fast slow as skewed corners and fast fast and slow slow as symmetric corners. Uh, and the question is, what kind of impact does this have on our finished chips? Will the chips not work? Will they work? And if they work, how different will they work? Now, uh, if you look at, typically people think of uh, skewed corners as more, as more severe than, um, than symmetric corners. And if you look at skewed corners, what they cause is a variation between the rising delay and the falling delay of the output, TP high low and TP low high. So for example, in the slow fast corner, we will have a longer low high delay than we expected and a shorter high to low delay than we expected. So this corner will cause us to see um, different um, delays changing differently. Now, symmetric corners cause both devices to become either slow or fast. Let's first look at the slow, slow corner. The slow, slow corner will cause both the NMOS and the PMOS to become slower. This will increase the delay of combinational gates and of sequential gates. It will increase all delays, best case delay and worst case delay. What, we'll do, what this will cause is that it will cause us to have a longer clock period than the clock period we counted on for the typical, typical corner. And so we will start to see setup time violations if we try to use the same clock frequency we expected to have from the typical, typical corner. So is this a disaster? It usually isn't, because what we have to do is actually operate the chip at a slightly lower frequency. We have to absorb the negative slack that results from the process variation, which uh, is typically not that large and we can absorb it. And what we end up doing is we end up shipping the chip as a slower grade chip. So this has to do with the fact that setup time violations are easily detected and solved by lowering the clock frequency. However, if we have a fast, fast corner, this causes both devices to act faster than the uh, typical corner. In the best case, what this will do is it will improve the worst case delays, causing us to have excess positive slack on all the path, including the positive, including the uh, critical path, if we try to operate at the clock frequency suggested by the typical, typical corner. So we can actually operate faster than we expected, and we can ship this chip as a faster grade chip. So this could be sold actually as more and a more expensive chip than the typical chip that we, that we expected to get from the process. However, the problem with the fast, fast corner is that it also improves the best case delay. And why this is a problem is that because if we did not 
simulate for the fast, fast corner before fabricating, then the, the, the CAD tool did not have the chance to detect some of the hold time violations that would result from the devices becoming faster. And so as the devices become faster, some of the path finish earlier than we expected them to, creating hold time violations that we did not expect to see. If we lower the clock frequency, these hold time violations will not be solved. In fact, if you have a hold time violation in your finished chip, there is no way, no direct or systematic way for you to know that there is even a hold time violation. The chip will simply fail and there will be no diagnostic test to say that this it failed because of a hold time violation. Hold time violations can only be solved at the design stage by inserting combinational delays. So if a hold time violation arises because devices are faster than we expected, the chip will malfunction, will have to be thrown out, and will have to go back to the drawing board. This is why when we perform simulations, we have to perform simulations with design corners in mind. And people often design based on the slow, slow corner and the typical, typical corner. But it's also important to simulate for fast devices to detect and accommodate whole time violations that would not otherwise uh, be clear.